the highlights, Bill. We've been absent for a couple of weeks from the show. Uh, we've been working on some other things with Trio Four Productions. I uh, got a new comedy series. If you like comedy, you should definitely check that out. It's entitled Unlawful Entrepreneurs. Give it a view. It's uh, really funny. But uh, in the meantime, better late than never, we're back with our uh, week eight preview for the college football season. Let's start off with a look at the latest AP Top 25 poll. All right, so as you can see, the poll uh, looking a little different. Penn State up to two, uh, Georgia at third. Big Ten has three teams in the top ten. Big 12 also has three teams in the top ten. I think that just shows the Big 12 is a lot stronger conference this year than it was in the past year. Looking a lot better, a lot tougher, a lot of tough teams. And uh, I think the poll is, as, as a whole is pretty much not a lot to argue with in it, I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you? No, it looks pretty good. I like the way it sits. Uh, BT sitting in the top 15 at 14. I know you're happy with that. Very West happy. Virginia back in at 23rd after the awesome come from high winning against Texas Tech. Looking good for the rest of the schedule. Still got a shot to get in the Big 12 championship. Control their own destiny. Mm, I don't see that happening, but hey. I don't know if anyone's beating Alabama either. They may nah, sit up there fairly well. Yeah, they're going to fail one looking good too, though. Uh, Alabama and Georgia SEC championship showdowns. What I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. the first three right now. And, what a little upset. I mean, I mean, you never know. SEC's tough conference. You never know what happened. Let's uh, get into the, what about the Heisman watch? Give me your uh, top five Heisman candidates going into week eight of the season. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Baker Mayfield still sitting high at number one. Uh, Saquon Barkley at number two. Uh, Mason Rudolph at number three. Uh, Bryce Love at number four. And Rashad Penny at number five. I like it. Not a bad list there, my friend. Yeah, but Shaw Penny fell off. He ain't really been doing so high. Yeah, he dropped out of my top five, but uh, still having a good season, though. What about you? As for me, uh, fifth, I'm going to put JT Barrett from Ohio State. You know, he's a guy that I, I talked about in the past. You know, I haven't really been sold on his, his ability as passer, but he's really starting to prove that this year. He leads the nation in touchdown passes at 21st, tied with uh, West Virginia's Will Greer. And then he's also, you know, against Nebraska, he showed uh, what he could do as he threw for 325 yards. And five touchdowns, also had two rushing touchdowns, but he did that while completing 81% of his passes, I think it was. So he's really coming around as a passer this season, I think, and he's up at fifth in my eyes and watch right now. Fourth, uh, Mason Rudolph. You know, he leads the nation in uh, pass yards per game with 394.7. That's that's tough there, damn near 400 yards a game yeah. right there. That's, that's big stats. That's big stats. And, uh, third, Bryce Love. He's had, you know, a couple of down games, past two games under like 150 rushing yards, but I mean, you know, that's down games for. For him, anyway, he's still averaging almost 200 yards a game, I think 198.1, which leads the country. So he's up there at third. Uh, second, Baker Mayfield. Uh, what a year he's having. He's uh, thrown for over 300 yards in five and six games, and he's done it while completing almost 73% of his passes. Uh, really impressive year for Baker Mayfield so far. He's second. And then uh, number one, I'm all, I haven't watched, of course, Saquon Barkley. Uh, first in the country in all purpose yards per game with 217. And he just puts on a show every time he's on the field. And the tougher the competition, the higher the level he plays. And he's really impressive to me. And uh, sits first on the highest watch. Before we get into the weekly pick, and let's uh, update the standings uh, through what we have so far this season. Let's get a look at it. So as you can see, I'm still uh, sitting pretty, holding a nice little seven-game lead over Fletch as I'm 64 and 11. He's sitting at 57 and 18. Uh, maybe hopefully you can catch a little uh, ground this week. So, uh, still a lot of weeks left in the season. Who knows how things going to end up? Yeah, we're only halfway through. Exactly. So uh, let's get into it with the weekly pick on that. Um, started off Tennessee going on the road to take on number one in the country, Alabama. We talked about them. Don't know if anybody can beat them. Do you think Tennessee has a chance? Roll tide, roll, baby. 
We're going to roll on through. I'll agree with you. Alabama gets the win easily. And then uh, Kansas, the team is really struggling, you know, again, the Big 12, even against Iowa State, who had, in the past been a counterpart, but in the bottom there. But Iowa State's really looking good this season. Tiger's yeah. second in the Big 12. And Tom Nagy, 52 to nothing, upset Oklahoma. So they're coming out in Kansas, you know. They're looking to do that eventually, but they're still at the bottom this year and taking on the reform in the country, TCU. What do you think is going to happen? TCU, baby. Yeah. How much can you do? Kenny Hill and those guys, and that uh, TCU's uh, impressive defense. I don't think Kansas can score on them, and uh, I think TCU gets it done at all. And uh, Maryland taking on number five in the country, Wisconsin. Wisconsin at home in Maryland. Who do you like? Uh, it's going to be a tough game. You know, Maryland got a high powered offense, but uh, defense ain't strong enough, so I'm going to go with the Badgers. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Wisconsin D, I think it's good enough to shut down Maryland. DJ Durkin's done a good job there, and they've been looking better, but I think Wisconsin gets it done here. Mm hmm. Uh, then here's another one, Syracuse. They're coming off that huge win, upset Clemson, uh, who was number two in the country at the time. They got uh, two of the top receivers statistically in the country, and Eric Gundy, who's been playing uh, great football this year. Mm -hmm. That offense high-powered under Dino Babers. They're going on the road to take on number eight in the country, Miami. Uh, looked really good. Walton, one of the better uh, running backs in the country, though, is uh, went Out down. Season, yeah. So uh, it's going to be tough here, maybe, uh, even that playing at home. What do you think? Is that Miami? Yes, sir. Ooh, I want to go with Syracuse, but I'm going to go with Miami because they're at home. If they was away, I was going with Syracuse, but yeah. they're at home. So. That's, yeah, Miami at home, you know, but I think losing the running back, this is going to be a tough game. This is going to be a battle yeah. right here, I think. I'm going to have to go with the Hurricanes, too, but I, I, I'm like you, I want to pick Syracuse. So I think it's going to be a good game. Watch yeah. out for this one. Yeah. Uh, number nine, Oklahoma, going on the road to take on uh, Kansas State in Manhattan. Kansas State, a team that always has a good defense and uh Yet again, they have that again this year, but what they're missing is the offense on this on uh, this season. They don't have the offense to match up with the defense they usually got. So they haven't been able to score the ball. Uh, think there's any chance they uh, start scoring a little bit and upset Oklahoma at home? That could happen. I mean, Iowa State won, you know what I'm saying? So, But I'm going to go with Oklahoma. Yeah, I think so too. I just can't stay. They just can't. They can't score until they show me otherwise. I, no. I can't really pick them, especially against a team that can score like Oklahoma. Oklahoma right. gets it done on the road. Oklahoma State also going on the road, taking on a much improved team, uh, Texas. Found their quarterback there in Sam Ellinger. And, they put know, up they a tough uh, game against Oklahoma last year. I mean, last last, last, last week. week, yeah. Right, yeah. But I just, uh, I'm going to go with uh, OK State, too much Mason Rudolph and James Washington. Yeah, best duo in the country there, probably, yeah. quarterback receiver wise. And uh, I think so, too. Oklahoma State's going to get it done. Uh, Texas may give them a game, though. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Oklahoma State will get it done in the end, too much for them. Uh, North Carolina going on the road to take on your boys there, playing at home, Virginia Tech, the fourth team in the country. Well, you know, we played Clemson at home. I thought we was going to win against them. Lost. Uh, got, got the UNC. I got a tar early on, but it's a basketball drop and see. Uh, going with the uh, Hokies. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. I think so, too. I think uh, Virginia Tech will get it done at home. UNC's a team that a lot of people, you know, had hyped up coming into the season, but they it struggled this year, you know. They may turn around at some point, but I don't think it'll be enough to get it done this game. Mm -hmm. The turn around does come, and now Virginia Tech gets the win. Colorado going on the road to take on number 15 in the country, Washington State. Washington State coming off that big time yeah, loss, yeah. 37 to three, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so they're hurting now a little bit, reeling a little bit. You know, Colorado's a team that was really strong last year. You know, finishing the top ten in the country. You think they can go on the road and upset Washington State? No, I think Washington State gonna bounce back and have a big game, big time offensive break breakout game on Washington State. I think so too. I think we'll see a bounce back game. Either they're gonna come out hungry and uh, they're gonna win this one. Washington State get it done. In uh, Indiana, going on the road to take on uh, number 18 in the country now, Michigan State. Big win over Michigan, kind of surprised a lot of people and are a lot better than some expected this year. You think they're going to get the easy win against Indiana? Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be easy, but they're going to win. Yeah, Indiana's a team, uh, pretty pretty good defense, and they gave Ohio State a little trouble over mm -hmm. the season for a half there. And they may give Michigan State a little trouble here, but I don't think that they're going to get the win. It's going to be Michigan State getting done. Yeah. And then uh, number 20 in the country, Central Florida. Going on the road to take on Navy. Navy's a tough team. Well, uh, they they control, team that can shock They like to control the tempo. That ball control run offense. Oh, man. I'm going to go with Central Florida, but it's going to be a very close one. I think so, too. Central Florida's been really impressive with what they're doing so far this year. And I think they're going to keep that going. They're uh, looking like as good as they were back when they had uh, Blake Bortles there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sitting number 20 in the country, I like it. They're going to get it done here.
Another SEC matchup on top 25 team, number 21 in the country, Auburn, going on the road to take on Arkansas. The team that's kind of struggling uh, right now uh, is Arkansas. Do you think they can have a bounce back and shock and get a top 25 win? Uh, I think Auburn's offense is finally clicking. Uh, they went too clicking early, too early in the season, and uh, I think they finally got it together, so I'm going to go with the Tigers. I think so, too. I think they're starting to click at the right time, yeah. you know, right, uh, starting to find their groove at the right time, and Auburn can get it done easily against Arkansas because Arkansas just can't score with them. I don't think it will be a win. Uh, then number 23 in the country, back in the polls, West Virginia. Going on the road to take on Baylor, a team that is uh, 0-6 so far this season. Sitting at the bottom of the Big 12, uh, bottom of the Big 12 in pass defense and near the bottom in run defense. Um, but, I, you know, Baylor's a team, they've got some players still yet, even though the roster was devastated after everything they went through. But they've got some players still, and you, you feel like they're going to get one win here soon. And uh, Do you think this could possibly be that one, playing at home against West Virginia in a night game? Uh, if West Virginia uh, plays like they did in the second half, there ain't no shot, Baylor going to win. But if West Virginia starts slow, then there might be a chance. So I'm, I'm going to go with the Mountaineers. That's, that's what I'm looking to see from West Virginia. Can they come out to a fast star, which is something they really haven't done? This season in their big games, have a fast start. They've had to play from behind, and um, I want to see them come out and have a fast start on the road in night game, quiet the crowd, and uh, and just w- and lead from game in. They play a complete game because that's what we haven't seen from West Virginia this year. Play all four quarters, you know, and I think that they can possibly do that this week, and they'll get it done. West Virginia gets it done at Baylor. Number 24 in the country, LSU, going on the road to take on Ole Miss in another SEC matchup. LSU is finally ranked again, but they still ain't impressing me too much. Uh, they have a chance, a good chance to lose. They lost. I mean, they got the shit beat out of them by the other Mississippi team. And uh, lost to uh, Troy as well. Troy. Uh, go with LSU. It's good for better judgment, but the ranks. So I'm gonna go with Tigers. Yeah, I think that uh, you know the early losses uh, they were looking really bad, but I think you know they're up to five and two now. Maybe they're starting to find their groove too. I'm going to have to go with LSU against Ole Miss in this one as well, and I think they'll get it done on the road. And then uh, our two games of the week. Number 19 in the country, Michigan. Uh, lost to Michigan State a week or two ago. And going on the road to take on one of the teams that look like one of the best teams in the country all year, number two, Penn State, Trace McSorley and Saquon Barkley, and how impressive he is. Uh, do you think Michigan can upset these guys on the road? Uh, their defense is good. But you know they're obviously not good enough. wasn't good enough to overtop Michigan State. Uh, they're definitely not going to be good enough to stop uh, Barkley and McSwirly. McSwirly, whatever. I'm gonna have to go with Penn State. I think so too. Uh, I'm gonna have to agree with you and go Penn State here. I think Michigan's defense could really cause uh, Penn State's offense some trouble. But Penn yeah, State's defense yeah. is good as well, and Michigan really has uh, struggled on offense. Spate struggling on offense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know everyone they put in there is kind of struggling on offense and. Uh, Drew Real Peppers was a big part of their offense last year, bringing in on gadget plays and stuff, and they're missing that element, and that really, you know, made their offense explosive, and they don't really have any explosion in their offense like Penn State can have with Barkley and those guys, and so I think Penn State will be too much, and they'll get it done at home. And then our other game of the week, uh, rivalry game, number 11 in the country, USC, taking on number 13 in the country, Notre Dame, Notre Dame playing in the South Bend. Do you think they can get it done? I think so. I think uh, Sam Donald, uh, he's going to have a couple picks. He ain't really playing like the number one prospect like he should have been all year. Um, go with Notre Dame. They've only got one loss, and it was to Georgia by field goal. So Notre Dame it is, baby. I've, I've talked all season about, you know, not being sold on Notre Dame, and uh, I will say that they have definitely improved now. I'll, I will give them that. But USC is going to get it done here. Sam Darnold's the man. Sam Darnold's going to get it done against Notre Dame, and he's going to finally expose them. And they're going to get this loss here and drop back in the polls, and USC may jump back into the top ten. I think USC gets it done on the road. Well, let's talk about uh, upset alert this week. Okay. What's your team on upset alert in week eight? Got two of them. We got Navy could beat you know Central Florida, but that's a little one. I got Baylor up, Navy upset in West Virginia. It's a trap game. Uh, L and six, like you said, West Virginia starts off slow. You've seen Baylor gave uh, Oklahoma a good ass game. Right, okay. uh, it's at home. It's a night game, like you said. It's in Texas. Uh, West Virginia could be upset. I can, mean, I can, I can see that. I mean, it's definitely uh, what you see is a trap game for sure. Yeah. You could see that for sure, but 
What about much you? can you come down hungry after the performance last week? So you got on your little upset alert. As for me on upset alert, I'm going to put number eight Miami. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Uh, Syracuse, you know, they're riding high, confidence through the roof right now. Mm-hmm. Miami's playing at home, that is the one advantage we talked about. But Eric dungey has been playing like a top five quarterback in the country this season. That offense is explosive. Statistically, both the receivers sit in the top five in the country. So I think that their offense can definitely score, and Miami offense may not be able to score as much with uh, Walton out now. So mm-hmm. it's definitely a possibility for upset, and I've got Miami on upset alert this week and week eight. Let's talk about uh, X Factor of the Week. What uh, What's your X Factor of the Week in week eight? I'm going to go with uh, Will Greer. I mean... He's got to have a big game if if uh, he wants that offense to you know stay like they did the second half. He's you know what I'm saying he's got to put the ball on the money against a a, a whack Baylor team. And he's got to have a good game where they possibly lose. And on the road in a night game, you know, mm-hmm. uh, continue having a great season. This is the type of game you got to get done. Big 12 games are always tough. No matter who you be in the team six, they still got some players and they can make some plays. Who's your X factor of the week? My X factor of the week. I mentioned a little bit earlier about them not being able to score. But the uh, Kansas State offense, because I think the Kansas State's defense is good, and they may be able to stop Baker Mayfield and them guys mm-hmm. somewhat. But if their offense can score, we have seen through this year Oklahoma's defense has struggled. And if Kansas State's offense can find a way to score and maybe find a, you know something to expose in that defense, they I think can test uh, Oklahoma on the ro- on the road. You know, since another mm-hmm. Big 12 game, and it's in Manhattan where Kansas State always plays better. So um, I think that. Uh, you could say uh, offense, Kansas State's offense is definitely the X factor because if it's going to be a, a close game, their offense is going to have to show up. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's talk about uh, boosting the Heisman campaign. Who do you have as your uh, campaign boosting candidate for week eight? I'm going uh, to Baker Mayfield. I've probably been going him all year, but uh, for him to stay number one, he needs to have another clean, big game. Yeah, I mean, his completion percentage is one of the highest I've ever seen, especially being thrown as many times as he is a game yeah. and for as many yards. And he's ended up near 73%. That's awesome. And he's really looked unbelievable this year. Uh, who are you going with? Uh, Saquon Barkley for me. Uh, it's playing in one of our games of the week, uh, taking on another ranked Big Ten team. They're coming into his place, number 19 in the country, Michigan, known for having a good defense. Jim Harbaugh, known as a defensive coach. Uh, Saquon Barkley really has been impressive in the big games. And I think if he shows up again this week, he'll just – make his lead in the Heisman race even greater. And I don't know, you know, he may end up being uncatchable at some point if he keeps doing what he's been doing. But if he does that this week, he can definitely boost his campaign more than anyone else. So it's Quan Barkley for me. And that'll wrap us up for our Week 8 preview show on the on the highlights field. I appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, sorry for the hiatus. We'll try and keep the preview shows coming for you guys. Uh, this has been the highlights field brought to you by Trier 4 Productions. I'm Jordan. I'm Fletch. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to check out our law for entrepreneurs. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.